these, of course, are uh, probably most important for the point of view of a uh, uh, phage display work, right? So people put things out on phage, and they would evolve them uh, to do different things. So anytime you use phage display, it's something like Hawk, and there's other variations in different phages that do this. All right, so what we know about them is that they're basically hypervariable. They stick out on the phage, and, um, and people had hypothesized that what, what they were doing in the uh, environment is that they were helping find the, phage, uh, find the microbial host, right? Because it has glycoprotein sticking out. Okay? However, you don't need them in the lab. So a hawk knockout kills just as nicely as a hawk uh, 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 wild type. All right, so what you end up with is the idea that the hawks are, and the hawk-like domains are sticking, holding on to the mucus. That would explain it, and specifically to the mucin. The other thing that we know is that, um, that in lots of cases, these things can be really hypervariable because of different uh, molecular mechanisms. There's actually a really important one um, that you guys should uh, well, I can talk about it later if we want, but really this idea of using a reverse transcriptase to give you hypervariable regions. There's also another set of them, which are the C-type lectins. This came out in the um, NO paper, and that should like really raise uh, your eyebrows, right? So lectins are famous uh, for binding to mucus and to plants, right? These are really cool things there, okay? And so the idea is, is that what we've got is all these hypervariable things, which would help us explain why we get all these differences between individuals. So remember, everything that's different between people is their phage. Now we've got a way for the phage to hold on to. So all this would go together. And uh, this is Katrina's and, uh, and Jeremy's work, where basically they show that they can find a lot of the hot, uh, like domains and the C-type lectins, actually. Um, in mucosal surface things associated uh, phage communities, right? And we need to do a lot more of that, and we'll talk about that. Okay, so this is the last part of this part, which is just that if you take the T4 phage and you make a uh, plus, then so, someone already gave it, who sent us this to us? Uh, it was the Rao. Okay, Rao. Okay. They said it's this uh, phage, so you've got T4 and then you have T4 minus uh, the hawk, and if, you, if you're hawk minus, basically you don't protect the cells, you don't bind to the plates with the auger, etc. I mean, sorry, with the nuisance and so forth. This is the multi-particle uh, uh, tracking thing. Again, we don't need to, um, uh, all we need to know is that basically if you have T4 in the buffer, and you watch the particles over time, what you see is that uh, they, they vibrate around in the buffer, they stick to things like mucins, right? And this you'll have much better data on, we hope, soon. If you knock out Hawk, they don't bind to the mucin, basically. All right, so if you put all that together, this is where this new model, and this, uh, don't worry about the model, it, what matters here is that the outcome of the model. So if you're, living in that mucosal surface, and this is even without the hot domain specificity, right? This is just the phage being slowed down by a mucosal surface. What you'll find is that it's 15 times more likely to find a host by this model, which is a very simple model, which is cool. And if you're a microbe, you're 14 times more likely to die. So those are gigantic selection pressures, right? So there's a, it's really a big deal. Okay. So now you can imagine all mucosal surfaces are recruiting phage, and any time a microbial community comes into it, you die if you're the microbes. Okay. That gives you more phage and reduces your bacterial load. Okay. And it all happens exactly where you want it, which is right at this mucosal surface. Okay. Does that make sense to everybody? You guys remember this from Jeremy's stuff? Okay. All right, so. Why this all goes together and what, what's important about it is um, the, this, if we really want to start thinking about holobionts and we want to think about how phage are inter, uh, uh, mediating this interaction between a mucosal surface and the water above it or the, or the lumen, in the case of us, above it, 
that actually becomes really important because this is where we start coming into uh, really interesting things like thinking about the memory. Okay. So now, the one thing about, so in the immune response, you can have what we call innate immunity, which has no memory. Right? And what that means is that once you get, when you get exposed to something, the next time you get exposed to it, you don't actually have an enhanced response to it. Then you have specific immune responses, which is what our T cells and our B cells do, right? And those have memory. So that's why a vaccination works, right? So you get vaccinated and you get memory. If you actually think about this system, okay, it, and, and you include the microbiome version of it, right? We've got a memory system running. Okay? And what that, and you, the only trick you have to do is that you have to say that the microbiome is another tissue layer. Does that make sense to you guys? So we recruit, we're born with our mucosal surfaces, and then we recruit to them a set of microbes. Okay? And usually, let's assume we get those oral fecally, right? So, and I'm using the human model right now. Okay? What that means is that we're going to get ones hopefully they are less harmful, right? Because we're getting them from other healthy humans around us. Okay? What happens is that they, they start reinforcing each other so that um, now I've got my tissue layer, which is producing mucus, right, and mucins. I get a, uh, a bacteria with a prophage in it, and that prophage now is carrying a, uh, uh, one of these hot-like domains or something that holds on to this mucus, okay? And over time, I select right, for a particular phage type that selects for a particular microbe type, okay? And that now, that microbial type is holding a niche in my gut, okay? So the next E. coli that comes in, for example, can't get in to that niche because it'll be killed off by the phage, okay? You guys get that, right? That's fucking cool, right? So that's literally basically innate immunity talking to give us a memory system, right? So it's actually very cool. And it probably works everywhere, right? Of course, the places we're looking at right now are coral versus humans, right? Because those are the places to look for this, okay? But you can imagine this working any, any surface, right? And that's, uh, so Lauren's stuff, we'll come back to this. The things we should really think about is that we have an experiment that's going, remember, way back in the beginning, Alejandro, right, in Jeff Gordon's lab, right? What we've done in that system, um, we have done nothing, actually. <laughs> They've done all the work. <laughs> uh, so what, what's gone on there is that um, they make these humanized uh, uh, microbiomes in mice. So what they do is they take uh, uh, gut, human gut microbes and they put them into mice and they get communities uh, that establish in the gut. Okay. And then, so we built one of those and then we took phage particles, uh, the purified phage particles from humans and we gave, gave those to the mice. And now we have microbial communities with viruses from the humans growing on them. Okay. We should be able to figure out this <laughs> If this was, we should be able to use that model to start really looking at this question of uh, uh, innate immunity, or sorry, uh, a memory sort of system. We haven't gotten there yet, but that's actually probably one of the most direct tests of that. Does that make sense? So we should really think about, these are called notobiotic mice, and we, how we would do that. Okay. The other one is that uh, this is what Natasha is supposed to be doing. She's off having kids. <laughs> Who came up with that? No. So the cell signaling uh, uh, idea. So one prediction, I think, and I, I think you guys or Jeremy agrees, is that we should, the human should not be uh, a, a passive part of the system, right? What the human should be doing is when the, uh, when the sorry, when the phage come in and bind to that mucosal surface, some of those mucins actually are attached to the, uh, to the cell membrane. So what we're envisioning is, is, is that there's some cell sort of a signal transduction into 
the human cell that lets it know that there's phage sitting there, and that they adjust, that they, you know, it's one of these uh, co-adoption sort of things going on. So we're actually testing that right now. Yes. What kind of domains are in the intracellular part of these mucins? Yeah, no idea. Uh, and it, that's a good question. We have not looked. What do you mean domains? Like to do cell communication. So it's a glycoprotein is a long protein linked to the other cellular. Other intracellular. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we should actually look at that. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, does it have cool. like an SH2 yeah. or does it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I was in the camp. Because if it's going to communicate with the cell, yeah. there has to be something there, right? Yeah. Right, exactly. Well, yeah. not always. Well, I mean, just like a B cell or yeah, T cell yeah. receptor, you don't actually, you could have a complex that would be doing the signaling, but yeah. it would be obvious to look for that one. <laughs> yeah. Now we have single knockouts of each now, so we have the ones without the attached ones, and uh -huh. then we also just have the gel free Right, exactly. Too, so. Yeah, those are the knockdown uh, experiments that he's been doing. So we actually have the tools. The only tool that we're missing yeah, yeah. that we'd like more of is we need more phage knockouts, yeah. right? Because we're doing everything with T4, and it'd be nice to do that with uh, with other phage and just show that that works in general.